All right, so we have one more loop in the third film. This is the most recent film to be released, also by Discotech, the Episode Zero First Contact, so-called an origin story of how all the loop in the third characters met. Not a very good one. Actually, Fujiko Minia did a much better job at explaining their origin story than this ever did. But I still had to own it, and I had to check it out for myself. Then we have The Secret of Nim. This also is on Blu-ray, as well as a couple of other Don Bluth films. Then we have American Tale. And more of my favorites, An American Tale 2. After that, we have some oddities. We have the unusual Canadian film by Nelvana, known as Rock and Rule. Uh, strangely enough, it's really heartbreaking that Nelvana had to be so badass in the beginning, but then had to start doing crap like the Care Bears movie. Yep, same exact people. Then we have the Jetsons movie, an interesting film from 1985. Space Jam. If you're a fan of the Nostalgia Critic, you know how bad this is, but you also know how much of a uh, cult phenomenon it is as well. And I like it so much, I had to buy the soundtrack. This is probably my most favorite animated film ever besides The Castle of Cagliostro, Cats Don't Dance. The last film Gene Kelly was ever involved in. Now we're getting to the actual anime besides Lupin the Third. First up we have my second favorite anime series ever, Slayers. And I have the entire Slayers collection here, including the sequel series, Revolution and Evolution R. I have all five theatrical films in uh, this box set made by ADV. I have the motion picture and Slayers Return, the soundtrack. And you can't see everything and complete everything without the two OVA collections. Uh, which is just this one. It's two DVDs in the same thing. So, that is the entire Slayers collection there. I also have a art book of Slayers Return here, which uh, you can't read, of course, if you don't know how to speak Japanese, but it does have tons of pictures and designs. Let me see, there's the designs and uh, some storyboards of the film. It's my favorite Slayers movie. I also have an art book over here of the Castle of Cagliostro, and I even have the Castle of Cagliostro storyboards, which I conveniently got from Epcot Center in Disney World, if you can believe that. Kind of crazy, but I did. I also have Orphan, and Orphan the Revenge, which I bought from Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia. Kind of pricey, but I did buy it. Uh, Gokudo. Strangely enough, I'm pretty sure this is a bootleg, but I did not know that at the time. Uh, it's only on three discs, and the resolution is piss poor. But you get what you can get. I mean, I may eventually get the official DVDs later if I have the cash. Uh, Ruin Explorers, a very quirky, very short, very bizarre OVA fantasy series. Here's something else you should see if you get into uh, Lupin the Third, or if you're into this, you should get into Lupin the Third, because they had a crossover movie together, although it was kind of crappy. This is the 14th Target, although, I, actually, I should have put this first, the uh, Time Bomb Skyscraper of the Case Close series. Then the 14th Target, which is the second movie. And so far I only have the fifth season in the Viridian Collection on DVD. But I will be getting the first season a little later. Another uh, OVA series, Phantom Quest Corp. Kind of quirky, kind of interesting. A little bit more like Ghostbusters for anime Phantom series because... Uh, Unlike Soul Eater, which is actually an organization of uh, ultra-dimensional fighters of evil and demons and such, this one is actually a small business. And then we have 
the Soul Eater soundtracks, which I bought off of eBay. Um, this is number one, and this is number two. And you have the Meister and Weapon collections, both on Blu-ray. I bought those before I bought Slayer's Revolution, which makes these the first anime series I ever bought on Blu-ray. Uh, the Revolution series being the second. Those Who Hunt Elves, a very hilarious anime fantasy series, one of my favorites now. I'm a very big fan of anime fantasy. I don't tend to like the sci-fi or the mecha very much. I am now a fan of Dragon Ball. I bought the second series because I'd seen the first, well, actually the first season I saw on Netflix, so I bought the second season to enjoy that at home, but I will be buying the first and third seasons later. And then we have K.O. Beast, a lesser known anime fantasy series with anthropomorphic characters as you can see. So that's disc one, two, and three. And then the first disc of another series, which is a bunch of anthropomorphic characters who are in a police force. Hyper Police. Super Crime Fighters in the Future. I think that's a tagline they added when they made the DVD here in America. The rest of the season series is actually down here, so let's move down to the fourth shelf. Alright, continuing on, we have the rest of Hyper Police. Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, see, Volume 5, and Volume 6. This is another one of my most favorite anime series. Might be strange to think, why do I own any series that aren't my favorites, but I do. Um, I have actually have yet to see this Tenchi Muyo series, although I did buy it because it was quite cheap. I only could get the first OVA, though, because the other four or volu three volumes are extremely expensive. This is the first movie, Tenchi Muyo. Well, it's just actually, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's Tenchi Muyo in love. Because I think the others are the same name, aren't they? What are the name of the other two movies? Uh, then we have a cult classic, Plastic Little. Pat Labor 1, which is Pat Labor the movie, although this is an earlier dub as opposed to the re-released better dub. Burn Up, which uh, was uh, split off into Burn Up Excess, although this is a pretty crappy OVA to be honest. I bet you the other series is slightly more tolerable. Then we have All Things Dirty Pair. We have Dirty Pair Project Eden, the original movie. Then we have the newer collection of all three films, which includes uh, Project Eden, Affair of Nolandia, and Flight 005 Conspiracy. Very fun 80s anime flicks. We also have the Dirty Pair OVA series, which is 10 episodes from 1985. And then we have the Dirty Pair Flash Collection, which, yes, this was also re-released along with these two, but I feel it's unnecessary to get the re-released version because if all I'm going to get is two alternate dubs, I don't care to listen to an alternative dub. That's not a big enough reason for me to buy this again. I don't like it much anyways, but it's, it's kind of fun. Then we have two more 80s anime flicks, Project Eiko, and probably the best thing to come out of Urusei Yatsura, the original movie, Only You. I really, really like this movie. However, I don't like Outlanders. This was kind of crappy. Uh, Cutie Honey. I have yet to actually dive into this series, but I bought it because I figured, well, why shouldn't I get it if I got all the rest of this? Then we have Genshiken, one of those otaku self-referential series about anime fans. Very, very fun, very, very informative, and makes a lot of references to a bunch of animes, including a seven-minute sequence about nothing but Lupin the Third. I was very surprised by that, but very pleased as well. Then we have an original Gainax series, which... Uh, Basically, this was a series that was written by Hayao Miyazaki as a pitch. Then Gainax dumped him off the project, rewrote the story. 
he took the story and he rewrote it and turned it into Castle in the Sky. Gainex instead turned it into Nadia, the Secret of Blue Water. That is why both of these things are very similar. So we have volume one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There's a tin box that these all came in, but I felt that was kind of clunky to put on the shelf here. Then we have another Gainex creation. Otaku no video, which actually has interviews with real otakus and people who used to be otakus. Very interesting piece of uh, 1980s documentary. Um, and then we have the big Gainex creation, Fooly Cooly, on DVD. Had to have it. This series is one of my all time favorites now. It's a hilarious. Ninja series called uh, Ninja Nonsense. Had to get it in the bigger box set because it came with a couple of extra goodies with it. The thinner box set did not. Now, I believe that's the end of the anime, so now we have all the other TV series that I own, which those are going to steadily grow as I get more and more, um, well, money. You know, as I get more and more of these animes, I'm going to start moving into American animated series. So, if you could probably guess, yes, I am a brony. And I had to support the series because I want to see this series on Blu-ray in season sets. You know, eventually. I guess it's not necessary, but I would love to see it anyway. Uh, then we have Chowder, which surprisingly was never released in seasons. It only got these two singular discs, and then it was just shut down. Thankfully... My Life as a Teenage Robot has been released on three seasons already. I'm not sure if that's every season, but I'm pretty sure it is. I just bought the second season a few days ago. Should be arriving in a few days. Very excited about that, because this is one of my favorite early 2000s series. This is also the entire collection of Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego. And then I bought the first season of The Real Ghostbusters, because it was quite cheap. And I'm actually liking it. You know, this is, I think this is animated by, uh, by TMS as well. It's got really high quality animation for the day. It is partly animated by Japanese people, if it's not TMS. And I'm sure some of you are going to go moan and groan about this one. Uh, but I, even though I am a fan of the original 1940s, 50s animated shorts, um, I find no problem with this. Turning Looney Tunes into a sitcom was probably the most logical thing they could have done with the, the characters and the, the property. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. Absolutely nothing wrong. I find this fairly humorous. I, I love what they did with Lola. She's much more engaging now than she ever was, because before she was just a sex symbol. Had nothing of interest to contribute, but now she contributes very hilarious circumstances. So, uh, I enjoy it. I also do own some of the original cartoons. I'm eventually going to get the Blu-ray release that they made a while ago. Animaniacs. After mentioning them a bunch of times, here is the first season. I have not bought the second or third yet, but they're on my list. Here's the first season of DuckTales. I actually don't like DuckTales as much as I like Chippendale Rescue Rangers, so I'll be getting those a little later. And then I am a big fan of Disney Animation. Of course, I bought all the Blu-rays because I wanted to see the special features and the wonderful documentaries that the, uh, the Disney family likes to put together. So my grandmother bought this for my birthday a while back. The A couple of signature episodes of your host, Walt Disney, from his... Uh, television series. And finally to round off that shelf we have my favorite mini series, The Tenth Kingdom. Very much like an anime in many respects. And then we have season one, season three, and season four of Don Adams in Get Smart. I did not buy season two because I saw that on Netflix and these two came in a double pack so I still have to get season two and watch season five 
So, um, again, I will be getting Season 2 of MLAATR, and I got a Kim Possible A Sitch in Time, which I'll be putting here as well. The series for Kim Possible is outrageously priced, you know? So it's a shame I won't be able to get that anytime soon. But let's see what's on the bottom shelf. Okay, so I'm just going to save you a bunch of time here by not taking these off. So first up we have uh, The Muppet Show. This is a specific DVD which includes the Star Wars episode, which I've conveniently put next to my Star Wars related DVDs. First up we have the... Uh, the Episode 1 Revisited film, which is the Adiwan Restoration by a very devoted fan of Star Wars. Next we have Fanboy, which is a Star Wars fan film created by a couple of guys and a friend of my grandparents. He gave me a copy of that a while back. These are DVDs which include the Star Wars Christmas Special and documentaries created specifically for the films back in the day um, which are conveniently re have been released on the blu-ray that they did recently although since I own these there's not much chance that I'll be getting that blu-ray because I don't want to see any more George Lucas screw-ups which is why I own the special edition version from 1998 on VHS the only other version I'm ever going to get a Star Wars until something changes is the 2007 uh, Black Case DVD release with the um, the documentary Empire of Dreams, which I consider the greatest Star Wars documentary ever. And yes, to your shock and dismay, I own the prequels. I actually bought them right after I watched each of them in the theaters, and that's pretty much the only reason why I own them. I'm never going to get rid of them, though, because, you know, what's the point? They're interesting to own because you can say you own them and the documentaries are kind of cool, but no reason to get rid of it because who's going to buy it? Then we have Star Warped, which is a fan clay animated film from back in the day. We also have the Steve Odekirk Thumb films, which include Thumb Wars, Bat Thumb, Franken Thumb, The Blair Thumb, Thumb Tannic, and The God Thumb. And then we have some stop motion films. We have the Puppetoon movie, all about George Pal and his Puppetoon creations from the 1930s and 40s. We have a Max Fleischer DVD about his Out of the Inkwell series, which I got from an animation festival. Robbie the Reindeer, a creation by the Ardman Company. And then we have two films related to Tim Burton and... Uh, Oh, I forget the name of the guy that did The Nightmare Before Christmas, because Coraline was done by the director, not by Tim Burton. Uh, same thing goes for this Paranorman movie they're coming out with in a few days. Then we have the extras pile of live-action films, most of which, as I said, are westerns. So we have Treasure of the Sierra Madre on Blu-ray, Raging Bull on Blu-ray, Rio Bravo, which uh, I actually did quite like. Cat People, did not like. Take Me Out to the Ball Game, not one of Gene Kelly's best films, but interesting. Uh, Guys and Dolls, this was a film that for some reason somebody gave me to borrow it, but uh, every time I tried to give it back, they didn't get back to me on the phone, so I don't know if they ever want it back. I have no idea. I don't care for it much. It's not a favorite film of mine, and I didn't like trying to watch it. Still haven't seen Anything Goes. Uh, also, I haven't seen In Cold Blood or Back Black Sunday. I had to buy those for college because they were required, but I never had any reason to watch them because they weren't on the tests later on. Um, Steven Spielberg's Flop, 1941, and rightly so, it was a terrible film. The original True Grit, which I have yet to see. Uh, Shootist, El Dorado, McClintock, I believe this is a John Wayne documentary. A Charlton Heston Western, Will Penny. We also have Hang 'em High, High Plains Drifter. Hang 'em High was actually okay. And On Golden Pond. Some of these I will get around to watching because there's no reason I shouldn't see stuff in my own collection. 
But yeah, that about rounds out everything. That is every single DVD I own, except for a couple that I'm getting rid of. And since I'm getting rid of them, there's no reason to talk about them. So, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Hope this wasn't too long of a video. And next you'll probably see me talk about my manga or my, uh, my entire book collection. So, stay tuned for that, and if you want to know anything specific about any title I've mentioned here, please put a request in the comments, and I will see about putting together a specific video about it. So again, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Filmmaker Jay, and I will catch you all later.